Hello everyone, Professor Vaibhav Shah here. I got lots of messages and requests for projection of lines topic. For that, I have created complete lecture series of projection of lines just for you, covering basic to advanced concepts of lines with number of clear illustration. In today's lecture one, we will start with some basic concepts regarding projection of lines and we'll be solving few of the examples. Now, before we move ahead, I request you to go through my previous lecture first, which is of projection of points, so that you get the idea how to locate any point given in problem statement of your example. With this, let's get started. So now first, notations. Following notation should be followed while naming different views in orthographic projections. So our object is line AB and to represent its top view, we will use simple AB without any dash. Now to represent its front view, we will use A dash B dash and to represent its side view, we will be using A double dash B double dash. Now let us start with projection of lines. So information regarding line must be given, which means its length, you can say true length, position of its ends with HP and VP would be given like above and below HP and in front and behind VP would be given. Its inclination with HP and VP will be given, which is theta with respect to HP or phi with respect to VP would be given. So here our aim is to draw projection of lines means its front view and top view. So for that, let us understand simple cases of the lines. So now we will be having total five cases. Case number one, a vertical line, line perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. Case two, line parallel to both the HP and VP. Case three, line inclined to HP and parallel to VP. Case number four, line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP. And case number five, line is inclined to both HP and VP. So now let us study the illustrations given on next page showing clearly the nature of front view and top view of lines listed above and note the result. So now let us see case number one. A line is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. For that, we'll be taking one pictorial presentation. So let us see this is our pictorial representation showing a first quadrant means HP and VP. So let us take one line which is perpendicular to HP and which must be parallel to VP. So this is our line which is you can say perpendicular to HP and which is parallel to VP. Parallel to VP means each of the point of line must be at the equal distance from your VP. Let us see. So this line is parallel to VP. Now, next we'll be taking front view from this direction. So we'll be having one line as a front view on your vertical plane like this. So this will be your front view. So as you can see, the front view is denoted by A dash and B dash. And the front view line would be exactly the similar length of your actual object, actual line. So front view, line would be of a true length of the line. Now let us take the top view from this direction. So if we take the top view of this direction, so we'll be having one point as a top view in horizontal plane as we can see. And top view is nothing but the point A and B without any dashes. So this is your top view. Now this is your three dimensional figure. In examination, it is not uh, required to draw because it is very difficult to draw three dimensional figure. So we'll just understand this three dimensional figure here. Later on, we'll be converting this three dimensional figure into 2D orthographic views. So now before that, let us understand case number two, in which a line is parallel to HP and line is also parallel to VP. So let us take our picture representation once again. So here we are having our quadrant system and we will be having one line which must be parallel to HP and VP both. So this is your line. As you can see, it is parallel to HP as well as parallel to VP. So now let us take the front view from this direction. So if we take the front view, so we will be having one line as a front view 
and this is showing your points a dash and b dash obviously and when we will try to take the top view from this direction we will be having one line as a top view on your horizontal plane like this so always remember your front view always lies on your vertical plane and your top view always lies on your horizontal plane front view is denoted by dash points and top view will be denoted by without dash point as you can see your line is parallel to both the planes that means we will be getting the line in front view of a true shape as well as our line in top view will also show a true shape so we can say that whenever a line is parallel to any of the plane its orthographic projection would be of a true shape and true size and whenever a line is perpendicular to any plane here the perpendicular to hp we will be having point view in that plane to which your line is perpendicular so here your line is perpendicular to hp so you will be having point view in hp itself now this is your three dimensional object so we'll be converting into two dimensional normal view because in examination we have to draw only 2d view which is very easiest to draw so now let us convert it into two dimensional view so it is known as orthographic pattern so we'll be just rotating this horizontal plane by 90 degree direction in clockwise around your vertical plane so we'll be having this view so as you can see front view is a vertical line showing the true length so we can see front view is just above your xy line in vp which is of a true length and which is a vertical line showing a dash and b dash and top view would be a point view so we can see top view below your xy line which would be your point view for the case number 1 in which whenever a line is perpendicular to hp you will be having top view as a point view and whenever a line is parallel to vp you will be having front view in a vertical line is a vertical line and which will be on vp which will be of a true length so whenever your line is parallel to any of the plane you will be having true length as that view so now let us understand for case number 2 So now once again we have rotated HP 90 degree clockwise direction. We'll be having this figure. As you can see, front view and top view both are the parallel to XY line. Both are parallel to XY line, and both shows the true length. Why? Because a line is parallel to HP and line is also parallel to VP. So whenever a line is parallel to both the planes, you will be having both the views, front view and top view on respective planes, VP and HP, both showing a true length. Now. let us understand one more case a line inclined to hp and parallel to vp so we'll understand these cases once again by our picture representation so let us see this is our quadrant system once again so this is our line required line now it is said that your line is inclined to hp and parallel to vp so as you can see this is a line which is showing representing your hp and now your line is making an angle theta degree with hp and which is obviously parallel to your vp So in this case, let us take our front view first. So if we try to take the front view from this direction, we will be having one line on your VP, which is nothing but a dash b dash line of front view. So as your line is parallel to your VP, that means you will be having your front view equal to your true length of the line. And in this case, your line is making an angle theta with your HP, so you can have the same angle theta with your front view in your vertical plane. So now let us take the top view from this direction. so we'll be taking the top view from this direction so if we try to take the top view so we'll be having one line ab which is of top view now our line is inclined with hp so we can see that our top view is not of a true length but it is showing a shorter length than your actual line length so that means your top view in this case would not be of a true length but it would be of apparent length or a shorter length of your view now let us convert it into two dimensional orthographic view so this is our orthographic projection so in this case we'll be rotating this horizontal plane by 90 degree clockwise direction we will be having this view and we can say that front view is inclined to xy as we can see front view is inclined to xy by theta degree and top view is parallel to xy so whenever your line is inclined to hp you will be having your front view inclined to xy line and whenever your line is parallel to vp you will be having your top view parallel to xy line so here you can see that now let us understand one more case line is inclined to vp and parallel to hp so let us understand this also by your picture representations we will be taking our quadrant system but in this case your line is inclined to your vp so now we will be taking the inclination with respect to vp as phi so now as you can see your line is making inclination certain inclination phi with vp and it is obviously parallel to your hp 
So now let us start with your top view first. So if we try to take the top view, so we'll be having this top view as AB and top view will be making angles phi. Same with your VP. So as we can see your line is parallel to your HP. That means you will be getting top view as a true length of the line and you will be having the true inclination of this line in HP because your line is parallel to HP. So whenever your line is parallel to any of the plane, you will be having top view or any of the views respected to that plane as a true line and you will be getting a true inclination for that line. So now let us take the front view of this line. So we'll be having this front view. So this is your front view. So as you can see, this is your line length, which is a true length of the line, but your front view is quite smaller than your actual line of the length, actual length of a line. So we can say that whenever a line is inclined to any of the plane, in this case, your line is inclined to VP. So you will be having shorter length of the line as a orthographic projection. So here your line is inclined to VP. So we are having front view as shorter length than compared to your true length of the line. So let us convert into new orthographic projection. So we have rotated this HP 90 degree clockwise direction. So we'll be having this final view. So we can say that top view is inclined to XY line. We can see top is inclined at five degree angle to XY line and front view is parallel to XY line. So whenever your line is inclined to VP, your top view must be inclined to your XY line. And whenever your line is parallel to HP, it is obvious that your front view must be parallel to your XY line in this case. You can see that. So now let us understand one more case. And this is the most important case. So a line is inclined to both the planes, HP and VP. So let us understand by pictorial representation once again. So this is our line. So now you can see that this line is inclined to your HP at certain angle theta and your line is inclined to your VP. Now, how can I say it is inclined to VP? So you can see that each of the point of this line are not at equal distance to your VP. That means your point A is nearer to VP and your B is farthest from VP. That means your line must be making certain angle with your VP. So now let us take its front view of this line. So when we try to take the front view of this line, so we'll be having one line A dash B dash at angle alpha and if we try to take the top view of this line, so we'll be having one line at certain inclination beta, which is with respect to VP. So now in this case, your top view is inclined at beta degree angle with your XY line and your front view is inclined at alpha degree angle with your XY line. So now let us simplify further. So now we will try to remove this line from here. So we have removed this line so we can have the better understanding clarity of this idea. So here, on removal of the object line AB, we can see that front view has an image on VP. So front view is an image on VP and top view has an image on HP. So now we'll simplify this view once again. So we'll be converting into orthographic view. So orthographic projection in which we'll just rotate this horizontal plane once again by 90 degree clockwise direction. So we can see that front view is in VP just above your XY line and top view is just below your XY line in HP. Now, Note these facts, both front view and top view are inclined to XY line. So let us see your front view is inclined at alpha degree to your XY line. And now your top view is inclined at beta degree to XY line. No view is parallel to XY line. It is obvious that no view is parallel to XY line. Now both front view and top view are of reduced length. So it is obvious that the line is parallel to not your HP, not your VP, then it is obvious that you will be having this line of a reduced length as it is saying. No view shows the true length because no line is parallel to HP or VP. So you will be having no length of true length. So what to do next? So now orthographic projection means front view and top view of line AB are shown below with their apparent inclination alpha and beta. So we have taken this image from our previous example because in this image we can see that we are not dealing with the true length. In the example, we'll be having an actual object with a true length. So how to proceed for this example further? So let us understand this procedure. So in this case, we will try to make this top view horizontal parallel to your XY line. So here, top view AB is not parallel to XY line. Hence, its corresponding front view A dash B dash is not showing true length or true inclination with HP. So now your top view is obviously not parallel to XY line. That means the front view which you are getting 
will not be definitely your true length and which is not your true inclination with HP. This is not your true inclination. So now what to do? So now, note the procedure. So whenever we are having front view and top view, so how to find the true length? So whenever you are having front view and top view, but we don't have a true length, so how to find the true length? So now, views are rotated to determine true length and its true inclination with respect to HP and VP. So whenever we are having only front view and top view at certain angle, which are not parallel to your XY line, we will try to rotate this front view or top view and try to obtain our true length. So now in this case, we have rotated this top view. So we have rotated this top view at beta angle to horizontal line, which is parallel to your XY line. Now, if we draw one vertical line from this line to intersect this locus of your front view, B dash locus, we will be getting front view of the line. So we'll intersect this locus. So we'll be having this point B1 dash on this locus. And when we, when we join this B dash with A dash, we'll be having this line, this dark red line. This is nothing but our required true length. And the angle which we are getting is our required true inclination with respect to HP. So now what we have done is, so in this sketch, top view is rotated and made parallel to XY line. Why? because its corresponding front view, we can get a B1 dash as a true length and a true inclination with HP. Why we need true length? Once again, in our data, actual object is our line with a true length and we are not having true length in our example. So to obtain the actual length of the line and with the actual inclination, we'll just try to rotate this top view, make it horizontal. After that, we'll just draw one vertical line to intersect this locus. We will be getting this point B1 dash. After joining B1 dash, join B1 dash A dash, you will get this true length. And the angle you measure, you will be having this angle theta with respect to HP, which is your true inclination. Now, suppose, now, when true length is known, how to locate front view and top view? So let us suppose we are knowing the true length and true inclination, but we don't know the front view and top view. So how to locate that front view and top view? So we'll see in this case, component, a dash B2 dash of the line true length is shown, which is further rotated to determine its front view. So now what we'll do, so we'll first plot A dash and A, then after plotting this point by projection of point chapter, we will draw one line of a true length at true inclination and we'll locate this point as B1 dash. Now, after that, we will draw one another line at phi inclination with your inclination with respect to BP and true length, you'll be having this end point B2. After getting these two points, we'll be drawing two locuses, one from your B1 dash like this and second lo uh, locus from your another true line endpoint B2. Now, after drawing this locus, we'll be drawing one vertical line from the B2 to intersect your A dash line somewhere here. And after getting this point, we'll be taking the radius is equal to A dash to this point and we'll be taking A dash as a center, we'll be drawing one arc to get B dash point. So let us draw one arc, so we'll be having this point as your B dash point. Now, how to look at your point B here? So now for that, first of all, let us connect this B dash with A dash. We have connected this dash point with dash point. This is nothing but your front view. So let us denote it by front view. Now after that, let us draw one vertical line from your B1 dash. And after that, you will take A as a center and this green point as your radius. Try to draw this arc. So you will be having B point somewhere here. So this is nothing but your B point. This is your without dash point. This is your without dash point. So let us connect it by a dark line. So when we join this point by a dark line, we'll be having top view located. So it is very simple. We are only having two length with true inclination and we have converted this two length into front view and top view like this. So, now front view angle with respect to XY line is known as alpha or front view's angle with respect to HP is known as alpha and top view's angle with respect to XY or top view's angle with respect to VP is known as beta in this case. So now here A dash B2 dash is the component of true length AB2 gives the length of front view. Hence it is brought up to the locus of A dash and further rotated to get point B dash and hence A dash B dash will be the front view. Similarly, you will draw the component of other true length and you will find out the top view like same manner. Now let us move ahead. 
the most important diagram showing the graphical representation among all important parameters of this topic. Now let us study and memorize it as a master diagram and use it for solving various problems. So this is your master diagram. You have to memorize it by any way. If you memorize this master diagram, I guarantee you, you can solve any of the example which we will solve in further sections. You can solve any of the example if you try to memorize this question. So I would say that you just pause your video and try to draw this master diagram on a blank paper and try to remember it for multiple times and once you remember I definitely tell you that you can solve any of the example of projection of line without any further difficulties. So now let us understand what this diagram describes. So there are important 10 parameters to be remembered with notation which are used here. So let us understand one by one true length we can say TL which is A dash B1 dash and AB2. So this is your true length first which is AB2 which is denoted by AB2 and another true length which is A dash B1 dash. Next your true length is making certain angle with your XY line which is known as your true length angle with your HP which is known as theta and here your true length is making one angle with your XY line which is known as phi. So angle of true length with HP is known as theta and angle of true length with VP is known as phi. Now next we are doing one line A dash B dash. So A dash B dash is your front view line and front view so A dash B dash is your front view and similarly A dash B2 dash is your front view. Now here A B without dash is your top view and here similarly A and B1 without dash is your length of top view or top view. So now your front view is making an angle alpha with your XY line. So we can say angle of front view with XY is alpha or angle of front view with HP is alpha. Second here your top view is making an angle beta with your xy line so you can say angle of top view with xy is your beta or in other words angle of top view with bp is beta now let us denote the length of top view so this is your length of top view which is nothing but your top view itself so ab1 is your top view as well as your ab is top view so we can say that length of top view or length of top view we can say plan as well so you can see AB1 and AB is your plan next this is your length of front view or you can say front view so A dash B dash and A dash B2 dash is your length of front view so your length of front view is A dash B2 dash and A dash B dash you can also say it as elevation length or elevation as A dash B2 dash and A dash B dash so this is nothing but your plan and this is nothing but your elevation. So point with dash always represents your elevation. Point with respect to a uh, point without any dash will always represent you plan. So the next eight number point position of A. So we'll be denoting this position of A. So we'll be having A dash and A which will denote the position of A. So distances of A and A dash from XY line will denote the position of A. So distance of A dash and A with respect to XY line will denote the position of A. Next position of B, distances of B and B dash from your XY line will denote the position of B. So the distance of B dash and distance of B will denote the position of point B. Now distance between end projector which is the most important parameter on which the most of the time example is asked in examination DBEP. So distance between end projectors. So our line is AB. So the end point of the line is A and B. So point A's projectors are A dash and A, point B's projectors are B dash and B. So the horizontal distance between A's projector and B's projector is known as distance between N projectors. Now, note this also. Now theta and alpha always construct it with A dash. So always remember that you have to construct theta and alpha always from your A dash point. Next, construct phi and beta with A. So always remember that you will be constructing phi and beta always from your point A. Now, next, B dash and B1 dash would always lie on the same locus. So here you can see B dash and B1 dash always lie on the same locus. And next, B and B2 always lies on the same locus. So as you can see, B and B2 always lies on the same locus. 
also remember true length is never rotated so let us see whenever you are drawing any true length so observe here we are not rotating this true length but we are just simply drawing one vertical line from the true length here in this case also we are not rotating true length but we are just drawing vertical line from the true length so true length is never rotated and it is horizontal component is drawn so true length is never rotated but its horizontal component is drawn so here in this case its horizontal component is length of front view and in this case this true length you will be having this horizontal component as your length of top view now and it is further rotated to locate the view so now this length of front view is rotated to get b dash and here this length of top view is rotated to get your point b next front view and top view are always rotated so you can see this is your top view so we are rotating this top view and here in this case front view so we are also rotating this front view so front view and top view are always rotated and made horizontal and further extended to locate true length phi and theta so after rotating this top view we will be drawing one vertical line and extend this line till this locus we will be having this end point of your true length we will be having this true length and true angle theta and in this case if we try to rotate this front view so we will be getting this b2 dash point and we will try to extend this line from b2 dash to cut this locus of b so we will be having this end point of your true length which will give us phi which is a true inclination phi and we will be having this length is equal to true length so once again i am telling just remember and memorize this master diagram from this diagram itself we will be drawing or solving further problems now let us start with our first problem so now problem number 1 line ab is 75 mm long and it is 30 degree and 40 degree inclined to hp and bp respectively the end a is 12 mm above hp and 10 mm in front of bp draw projections and assume line in first quadrant so now let us start so here our two length of line is given which means tl is given which is 75 mm long 30 and 40 degree are the inclination of that line two length line with hp and vp so these are our two inclination with hp and vp so this is nothing but your theta 30 degree with hp and phi which is 40 degree with vp now before starting our example we have to solve this example of point first so always remember that before starting the example of line we will be first solving the example of point so now let us start so first we will be plotting xy line after that it says that point a is 12 mm above hp and 10 mm in front of vp so let us remember our previous lecture of projection of point point a is 12 mm above hp that means point a dash is 12 mm above xy line so we will be locating this point a dash which is 12 mm above your xy line after that point is 10 mm in front of vp that means your point is 10 mm below your xy line from your projection of point chapter after locating this point we know that we'll be plotting the theta from this a dash point and we'll be plotting this phi from a point from our previous master diagram so let us plot one line at an angle theta is equal to 30 degree and with its length is equal to two length which is 75 mm. so we have drawn one line of a true length and angle theta so our end point would be b1 dash now after that we'll be drawing one another line from this point a which must be at the angle phi and which is same length which is true length so we have drawn one angle the phi from this point a and we have drawn this true length after getting this true length of the line we will be denoting this point as end point b2 after that let us draw one locus from the b1 dash and let us draw one locus from your b2 on this b1 dash locus we will be having our point b dash somewhere here and on this point locus of b2 will be having b point somewhere here so now we are having both the true length so let us start so we'll first draw one vertical line from this b2 point to intersect this point after intersection of this point we will be taking a dash as a radius and this point as a a dash as a center and this point as a radius draw one arc to cut this locus and we will be having this point as b dash point so now this is your point b2 dash and after this we will be drawing one arc to get this point as our b dash point now after getting this b dash point connect this dash points So we'll be connecting this B dash with A dash. So when we join these two points, we'll be having front view. So always remember, dash points always give you a front view, except the true length. So this is your front view, and now your front view would be 
from your B dash point, you just draw one vertical line, you will be having B on this locus. We know that we are having A just below your A dash. That means projection of any point lies on same vertical line. So we can always say that B dash, under B dash, you will be getting B point somewhere here. So now we are having without dash point A and B. So let us join these points A and B. So these points are without dash. So obviously this will give you a top view. So your example is over. Very simple example. We have just followed the simple steps which we have learned from our master diagram. And you have to just plot these steps. You will be having this example. So this angle of your front view, if you measure, you will be getting alpha. And if you this angle will measure uh, beta for you. So now let us see one more example. Problem number two. Now line AB 75 mm long makes 45 degree inclination with DP while its front view makes 55 degree. And A is 10 mm above HP and 15 mm in front of BP. If line is in first quadrant, draw its projections and find its inclination with HP. So here line length, that means true length is given, which is 75 mm, which makes 45 degree with BP. That means true inclination is also given with respect to BP. So we can say phi is given phi is equal to 45 degree to BP. Its front view makes 55 degrees So front view. That means if you remember our master diagram, front view makes alpha angle. So your alpha is given at 55 degree. And we have one example of point that we have to solve before starting our example of line. So let us start. So we'll be drawing X, Y line first. Now point 10 mm above HP. So A dash would be 10 mm above X, Y line like this. Now point D is 15 mm in front of BP in front. That means below X, Y lines so will be having point A 15 mm below X, Y line. After that angle phi with respect to BP is given. So we'll be plotting always phi from your A point. So let us draw angle phi with BP. We'll be drawing angle phi with BP. So we have drawn one angle phi 45 degree from BP. We are having two lengths. So let us draw this two length at angle phi. So this end point would be B2. Now next here. Your alpha angle is given 55 degree. So now we'll be making alpha angle. So alpha angle is always with your front view. So front view is always drawn from your ADS points. points. So we'll be drawing 55 degree from your front view. But notice that the length of the front view is not given. So don't worry. We'll find out the length of front view later on. So how to find the length of this front view. So now we'll just draw vertical line from this B2. So first draw the locus from B2. Then after we'll be drawing one vertical line of from B2 to intersect your horizontal line of A dash and we'll be having this point as B2 dash. So this is nothing but your length of front view. Why length of front view? Because this is A dash point. This is B2 dash point. So both are dash points. We can say it as a front view or length of front view. So now it is very obvious that we will take A dash as a center. A dash B2 dash as a radius. Let us draw one arc to cut this front view line. So this point is nothing but your end point of your front view, which is your B dash point. So this is your B dash point. So now we have defined the length of front view. So let us say it as a front view. After getting this B dash point, simply draw one locus from your B dash point. This is a locus of your B dash or B1 dash. So we'll be having B1 dash somewhere here. Now after getting this B dash point, try to draw just a vertical comp vertical drop. So we'll be having this B point on this locus. So this is your B point. After getting this point B and this A point, join these two points without dash points. So this is nothing but your top view. Now, take the distance of your true length. Take the dimension of this true length on your rounder. Put your rounder at A dash point and try to cut this locus. So you will be having this point as your B1 dash point. So this will give you a true length. And if you try to measure this angle of true length with your X, Y lines, you will be having a theta. If you try to measure this angle of your top view with your X, Y line, you will be having the beta. So now find out the inclination with HP is asked. So you will be just finding the angle of true length with respect to your X, Y line, which will be the angle with respect to HP. So find out the answer and example is over. Now, one more example. Problem number three. Front view of line AB is 50 degree inclined to X, Y and measures 55 mm long while its top view is 60 degree inclined to X, Y line. If end point A is 10 mm above HP and 15 mm in front of BP, draw its projections, find true length inclination of line with HP and BP. So now 
here the front view of line AB is 50 degree inclined to XY. So once again, front view's inclination alpha is given, which is 50 degree with respect to XY. Here the measurement of front view is also given, which is 55 mm length. So front view length is equal to 55 mm and its top view is inclined at 60 degree to XY line. So top view, that means your angle beta is given with respect to XY, which is 60 degree. So we have to solve the example of this point first. And after that, we can locate this true length and true inclination with HP and VP. So now let us start with your XY line first. After that, we'll be locating this point A, which is 10 mm above HP and which is 50 mm in front of VP. So let us locate this point 10 mm above HP, so which is your point A dash and 15 mm in front of VP. That means your point 15 mm below your XY line, which is your point A. After that, we are having alpha and beta. So alpha is always drawn from your a dash and beta is always drawn from your A. So let us draw these two angles alpha and beta. So first we will be plotting this angle alpha first. So alpha is given as front view of the line makes 50 degrees. So let us draw one 50 degree line and the line length would be 55 mm because it says that you have to draw 50 degree line which measures 55 mm. So we have drawn one 50 degree line from A dash which is nothing but your alpha angle and line length is 55 mm. So our end point would be your B dash and this is nothing but your front view. So light down, this is your front view. Next, we'll be plotting one line at 60 degree from this A point at beta angle. So let us draw this line. Before that, let us draw one locus from B dash, which will denote the locus of B dash or B1 dash. You will be having B1 dash point somewhere here. So now, let us draw one line 60 degree from your point A. So always remember beta is always drawn from your A. So you have drawn one line 60 degree to A. But here the length of the line of the top view is not given. So what we do is we'll just draw one vertical line from this B dash and at whichever the place this 60 degree line beta degree line will intersect this vertical line you will be having point B somewhere here. So this is your location of point B. After getting this point B, it is obvious that we'll be drawing one locus. On this locus, we'll be having locus of point B or B2. So we'll be having any point B2 of your true length. So now, next for the true length, what we'll do is we'll just rotate this front view. So we'll just rotate this front view. So take your A dash as a radius and A dash B dash as A dash as a center and A dash B dash as a radius on your rounder and try to cut the circular arc on this horizontal line. And from this line, try to draw one vertical line until you reach the locus of B or B2 here. And this point is nothing but your point B2. So write down this point as a B2. After getting this point B2, let us connect it, this B2 with point B, or B2 with your point A. So you will be having true length. So this is nothing but your true length. After getting this true length, try to adjust your rounder exactly the dimension of a b2 and try to put your rounder at point a dash and try to cut this locus you will be having somewhere here point b1 dash so try to cut this locus you will be having this point as your b1 dash this is nothing but your true length here now if we try to measure the angle here so it will give us a angle of true length with respect to hp which is nothing but your theta and if we try to measure the angle of true length with respect to this line you will be having your angle phi and here it is said that you have to find out the true length. So you have to just measure the line length A dash and B1 dash by your normal scale. And when you measure this line, you will be having one answer of true length, which is nothing but your answer. Find the true length and inclination of line is already we have found out. So this is nothing but your example is over. Now let us move to one more example. So problem number four. So now line AB is 75 mm long, its front view and top view measures 50 mm and 60 mm long respectively. End point A is 10 mm over HP and 15 mm in front of BP. Draw projections of a line AB if the end point B is in first quadrant and find the angle with respect to HP and BP. So here the line is once again given true length 75 mm, its front view and top view measurement are given, front view is equal to 50 and top view is equal to 60. End point A is given, so we will be solving this example first. Projection of point, you have to solve the first, and then after we'll be finding this answer. So first, you have to draw one XY line. So we have drawn one XY line first. After that, we'll locate this point A dash and A. Like previous examples, we have located this point A dash and A. Now after this, we have front view and top view measures 50 and 60 degree respectively. 
So you have the inclination of front view and top view are not given. That means we will be drawing horizontal line of front view and top view. So this is a length of. So now we'll be drawing front view and top view lengths. So what we'll do is we'll just draw top view length and we'll be drawing a front view length. Now after that, from the length of top, we will be drawing one vertical line and we'll draw a true length which is uh, given as 75 mm. And whenever your true length cuts your vertical line at this place, you will be having B1 dash point here. Now, when you are having this B1 dash point here, let us join this B1 dash and A dash, you will obviously getting your true length here. Now, this is nothing but your locus, which will specify the locus of B1 dash or B dash. On this locus, you will be getting B dash point somewhere here. Now, after that, you will be drawing vertical line from your length of front view somewhere here. So you have to draw just vertical line from your B2 dash. And when you try to cut your true length on this vertical line once again, you will be having this point as your B2 point, which is nothing but your end point of your true length. So what we have done is, so here true length is given, front view and top view are given. So we have first plotted the length of front view, which is given as 50 mm. So we have just plotted 50 mm horizontally from A dash. Length of top view was also given, which is 60 mm. So we have drawn length of top view, which is 60 mm. After getting this top view, we have just drawn the vertical line and we have taken on a rounder length is equal to your true length and we have put our rounder at A dash and we have tried to cut this vertical line of your coming from your top view. So we'll be having this point B1 dash. Once again, in this case, from length of front view, this B2 dash point, we'll be drawing one vertical line and we'll put our rounder at point A and we'll take the measurement of top or true length and we'll try to cut this vertical line coming from your B2 dash here. So we'll be getting B2 point here. After getting these points, we'll be drawing two locus is simple. And now next step, it is very easy. Third step, we'll be taking the dimension of A dash B2 dash and A dash as a center, you have to draw one circle to cut this locus. At this point of intersection, we'll be having this point B dash. After getting this B dash, just join this point B dash with A dash. You will be having your front view and after this point B dash, you will just draw one vertical line from B dash to get your point B somewhere here. So here, this is nothing but your point B. After getting your point B, just join your B point with your point A. You have joined this B point with your A. Now these are without dash points. So obviously, this will give us a top view. So write down it as a top view. Your example is over. Now you have to find out the angle with respect to HP and BP. So now we will measure this two length angle with respect to HP, which is theta, and we will measure angle of this true length with respect to BP, which is phi, and these are our answers. So next, top view of a line 75 mm long CD measures 50 mm, end point C is in HP and 50 mm in front of BP, end point D is 15 mm in front of BP, and it is above HP. Draw the projection of line CD and find angles with respect to HP and BP. So now true length, a top view of the line, top view of a 75 mm long line is given. So here it is not a top view, but here it is saying that top view of a line, 75 mm long line. So line length is 75 mm and we are talking about the top view of that 75 mm long line. So here our true length is 75 mm, our top view is not 75 mm. Remember that. Now, our line is in this case CD, so don't try to change your notations from A and B to C and D. But we will be following the same master diagram just with the change of notation. Now, measures 50 mm. So our top view of this line measures 50 mm. So that means our top view measures 50 mm. So true length is 75 mm and its top view would be 50 mm. Now, end point C is given which is in HP, that means on XY line and 50 mm in front of BP, that means 50 mm below XY line. Now end point D is also given. So here two points are given. So always remember whenever the two points are given, we will try to locate first point and we will draw the locus of another point. So now let us start the example. We'll draw first XY line. We will try to locate this point first, point C. So we'll be trying to locate this point C first. It is given that point C is in HP. That means point C dash on XY line from projection of point chapter. If you are struggling with this point, location of this point. So please 
try to refer my previous video on projection of points. Now, so as it is said that n point C is in SP, that means point C dash would be on x y line, and it says that 50 mm in front of VP, that means our point C would be 15 mm below our x y line. So this is nothing but your point C. So we have located first point. For second point, we will try to draw one locus. So we have plotted one locus for the second point, which is point D is 15 mm in front of VP. So we have to draw the locus of point D, which is 15 mm in front of VP. That means which is 15 mm below your x y line. So we'll be having this as a locus of point D because 15 mm in front of VP. So with respect to VP, we will be always getting the point without dash. So this will be the locus of point D without any dash. Now after that. Top view of line is given 50 and true length is given. So we know that top view and true length both can be plotted from your point C. So we'll be trying to plot first top view and true length from your point D. So let us understand first. This is a locus of D and D two. Why? Because here it is said that n point D is 15 mm in front of VP. With respect to VP, that means the answer we are getting is without dash points. Without dash, that means we'll be having locus of either point D or D two. Which is 15 mm below x y line. So let us start. So we'll be first plotting this point. So now this is nothing but your top view. So top view is 50 mm. So we'll be setting 50 mm on our rounder. Put your rounder at point C and try to cut this horizontal locus of point D or D2. So we'll be getting this point first D. So this is nothing but your top view. Now secondly, we are having True length is equal to 75 mm. So try to adjust on your rounder 75 mm. Then after put your rounder at point C and try to cut this 75 mm on this line. So you will be having the end point of your true length, which is D2 point here. So this will be your point D2. Now after getting these two points, we'll be just drawing one vertical line from D because we know that D and D dash lies on the same vertical line. So we try to find out the D dash point somewhere here. We don't know where is point D dash, but we'll just draw an arbitrary line from D to find out D dash somewhere here. After that, we'll try to draw a vertical line from D two to get here point D two dash. And after getting this point D two dash, we'll take C dash D two dash as a radius and C dash as a center. We'll try to cut this circular arc on this vertical line. We'll be having. This point, final point, as our point D dash. After getting this D dash point, try to join this D dash with C dash. So we'll be joining this D dash C dash. This is nothing but your dash point. So we'll give you a front view. After getting this D dash, just draw one locus from your D dash. So we'll be drawing the locus from our D dash. And after drawing the locus, try to adjust the dimension of true length once again and put your rounder at C dash this time and try to cut this locus of D. So you will be having your point somewhere here. Which is your end of the true length point, which is D1 dash point. So now we have got this point D1 dash. So now this is the locus of D dash or D1 dash. So this is your true length. This is nothing but your dash point. So this will specify your front view. This is your line, which is your true length, and this is once again without dash line. This will specify you the top view. Now it is asked that find the angles with HP and VP. So we have to find out the angles of true length with respect to HP and VP. So this is your true line in green. So we'll be finding out these angles. So we are measuring with respect to C dash. That means this angle would be your angle theta. So measure this angle and write down these as a theta. If we measure this angle of C dash D dash, it will give us alpha. Now next, if we try to measure this green line angle, which is a true length, so if we try to measure this angle, which is with respect to C, so we'll be having this angle as a phi, and another angle, which is the angle of your CD without dash, which is your plan length angle. So if we try to measure this angle, it will give us angle beta. So try to find out alpha, beta, theta, and phi, which will be your required answers. So we'll be locating these final views. So these are angle theta, phi. So hard work has no alternative. Always remember. So now this is all from my side. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Keep learning. Stay connected. And if you have any doubts or queries, feel free to comment below. Bye bye.